so much. I was your brothers and sisters. I was so good. I just want to eat them up. Yeah. What I want. I will tell you what I want. What I want is like a 12 piece. 12 piece uh, biscuit. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the money, the money is under the door. Just, just, yeah. And I, and I just want you to tell the colonel that I, I've always truly respected him and his very great Hello? 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 Hello, call back. Hello, welcome everyone to an all new episode of Rock Guy Comics. And I have a story for you. It's about the Daredevil. But not the evil, evil kinds of Zaredevil. This is, this is the guy who wears the leather suit and just stunts. Which, I, I guess is actually a lot like evil, evil. Everybody really loves Zaredevil, which is interesting. Because most people tend to hate lawyers. I know I hate my lawyer. It didn't do shit for me. They might divorce too, which is why. So I probably look worse than I normally do. And today we're going to be looking at a story where Zaredevil looks pretty bad. It's a story called The Shadowland. And The Shadowland was written by John Dig... John D B By Diggle. It's that guy. It was written by that guy that probably. As we join the story, Daredevil villain The Bullseye has just escaped from The Shield on his way to the prison. You see, Bullseye was on his way there because he had killed a bunch of people. You know, just an average day that I said, why when you're a professional assassin? He also blew up a big piece of Hell's Kitchen. And when he returns to New York, he's shocked to see that where the crater once was, there's now a giant Asian castle. That place is called the Shadowland of the title. Daredevil is in control of the Shadowland, but more than that, he's in control of the Handman. And the Handman are basically a bunch of ninjas. They're like the foot, but with fingers. I mean, that's, that's what it is, right? It's the foot, but with fingers, or whatever. Hand ninjas, as we find out, have been patrolling all of Hell's Kitchen, and criminals are just kind of disappearing. And it's because of this that the Avengers decide that they gotta do something about this. And by do something about it, I of course mean they do the American thing, which is get other people to do the job for them. Namely, Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Because, you know, they're the more street-level heroes, so chances are, you know, they're gonna understand Daredevil better. But when they get there, Daredevil, he's, he's back to block. He's, he's going through a goth phase. He's got... Evil ninjas with horns, he's got a black suit. And we got a big fight scene where Daredevil hunts down Bullseye and stabs him through the body in a manner very similar to how Bullseye killed his lady love, the Electra Woman. Now obviously committing murder means that the Daredevil man is now an enemy of all the other superheroes in New York. And the Moon Knight, who is like a crazy person, decides that he's gonna go in undercover and see what's going on. He gets himself captured by hand ninjas, and then he basically just doesn't do anything in the main book. This is the big problem with Shadowlight, is that there's like dozens of tie books that you both need for context, and yet don't actually help you out at all in understanding the bigger story, but I'll get to that in a minute. Things get so bad, in fact, in Hell's Kitchen that the Kingpin, the big fat white suit guy, who reminds me of the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man if he was a mobster, comes to the heroes and says, We gotta do something about this crazy devil guy. We gotta work together. But understandably, the heroes want no part of this. So what does this Kingpin do? He does a Satan ritual to summon the Ghost Rider. Yes, the Ghost Rider is in the story too, and it sounds as forced as well things that get forced. Now, it's at this point you're probably asking yourself, what the hell has happened to Bad Murdoch to make him go so crazy? What, why is he killing people now? What happened? Well, as we find out, the reason he's got all crazy is because he's possessed. Yes, he's got a devil in him. The daredevil has a devil in him. Well, okay, technically, it's a demon, but I'm not going to split hairs. 
is the worst of the Hand Clan that has now invaded his body and is making him act evil. Yes, his big fall from grace is not because of anything that was actually happening in his life, it's because the devil quite literally made Daredevil do it. And the heroes don't know this until later, which means they end up fighting. And fighting some more, and Spider-Man shows up because it's a Marvel event and you need Spider-Man in there. And then the Punisher shows up for like a minute because comics with the Punisher sell a lot of them, so of course it is to be in there too. We also find out that Daredevil has actually created an army of undead heroes and villains who have been brought back to life via hand magic. Yeah, these crazy ninjas can bring people back from the dead. They're friggin' necro dancers over here. Back in my day, we used to necro dance all the time down at the graveyard. You, you kids don't even know. Don't know a good necro dancing. One of the people Daredevil actually chooses to necro dance is Bullseye. He's so desperate he's gonna bring one of his worst enemies back from the dead. And Electro, who is also alive and also there, has no problem with this. Or at least she does it at the end of issue two. By issue three, she's already completely turned on Daredevil. We find that was working with the heroes. Ugh. Oh god. This story gives me gas, and with obvious reason, because shit just kind of changes at a moment's notice, with very little connective tissue between issue to issue. Apparently, the beast inside Daredevil makes him super strong because he can actually take a stab from Wolverine. Yeah, Wolverine is in this now. Wolverine has had a history with the hand and with ninjas, and I mean, if you got a ninja problem, who you get called to bust him, besides Wolverine. Heroes actually wail on Daredevil so much that he assumes his true final 100% perfect form, which is just a devil with bigger horns. So, you know. It's not the size of the horns and the man that matter, it's the size of the man in the... Sorry, I blocked out there for a second. What was I saying? Daredevil goes so crazy on demon magic that he almost kills his best friend, Foggy Nelson. Yeah, this is like the penultimate issue of the book, and like, Foggy Nelson only shows up at the end for a Daredevil-based event. There's like, very few Daredevil characters. In fact, building an event around Daredevil is weird, because Daredevil's storylines pretty much went on unmolested from events, so to have one big event around him was kind of weird. Uh, in, in the end, he doesn't even really so much save himself as Iron Fist blasts him with she magic, and then he travels inside his own mind where he has to commit Harry Carey, and that's basically where it ends, and, like, he goes to church, because he's Daredevil, and of course he goes to church, and that is basically the whole story. <clears throat> so that's Shadowland. And it's not a good Daredevil story. In fact, it might actually be the worst Daredevil story. And not a lot of it gels together. They had already sold a story about Daredevil going to the dark side when he had become the Kingpin back in the Bendis run of the book, which is a much better story. There's way too many ties to this one. Uh, it looks pretty, I guess. There wasn't exactly a lot of lasting impact. Shadowland, the building, stuck around for a bit. And Kingpin had access to the Hand Ninjas for a bit until Superior Spider-Man and his spider tanks destroyed it. No, these are all things that happened. And that's basically the star. So my tank is going to be here soon, so uh, thanks for watching, everybody. This has been another episode of Drunk on Comics. Cheers.